Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've actually got another 34401A an Agilent branded this time 6.5 digit multimeter now I have actually powered this one up and I have actually had a look inside uh, and I can actually see a problem with it but let's power it up let me show you the symptoms that it's got and we'll progress with the repair right and here we go I've got my PDVS2 Mini Let's set it to 1 volt and actually hook it up here into the input. I've got it set for DC voltage already. And let's just plug that in with these nice short leads. And I'm getting absolutely nothing. It's just hovering round about that 0 volts mark. And let's try one of the other modes. Let's disconnect the black lead there. And let's put it in ohms. And already there looks to be a problem. It's uh, showing a high uh, mega ohm resistance there. Let's just short out the input. And again, no change. So it looks like the actual inputs are just having no effect uh, into the meter. And whilst I'm here, let's actually try the rear terminal. So let's me just... Turn on the rear terminals there. And then I've shorted out the input in the back. And again, same. Just reading a high mega ohm. So there's definitely a problem with the meter. So let's open it up. Now the reason I've already been in it is because it doesn't actually belong to me. It belongs to one of my sources of faulty multimeters but this one is just a straightforward repair for them so let's just slide off the cover there and let me reposition the camera so everything looks pretty clean inside both sides of the actual unit it doesn't look like anyone's been in here before. The caps look like they're original, capped on tape included. The PCB looks pristine. The ribbon cable to the display looks fine. Transformers intact, all the wiring looks intact, everything. But I have spotted something over here. Let's take a look. Hopefully you can see down here, the right near the front of the meter, right next to the inputs, you can see a couple of inductors down there, L101 and L106. And not sure if you can see that, but both of them are cracked. And one of the accompanying resistors looks a little bit like it might be damaged as well. Not sure. So let me get this metal plate off here and let's get better access down and take a look at those inductors and those resistors. But first of all, let's take a look at the schematics. Okay, so you've got the front and rear terminals over here, and the high and low side from the front terminals comes through a couple of relays there for selection of the front and rear, etc. And the high side goes away through this ESD control circuit out here, marked as high XREF. The low or the current side comes along here through the big 7 amp fuse etc and out here on amps XREF. And from there onto this other sheet you've got the high XREF and the amps XREF coming in here. Now L101 and L106 are here and there's those two resistors that accompany those inductors. So Let's go down now onto the circuit board and let's expose those inductors and take a better look. Well, yes, exposing those inductors, it does look like, yeah, they're both cracked. And, uh, yeah, it looks like I'll have to replace them. So let me get my meter on those resistors and let's make sure they're okay. According to the schematic, they're both 3.6K. So let's double check that. Okay, let's get the multimeter down onto R118 first. The dodgy, the two resistors. And we've got an in-circuit reading of 12.9K. That's definitely a problem. And the other one, R103, 
3.4k. Now, I did say earlier it was 3.6k, I was wrong, they're both 3.16k according to the schematic, so looks like I'll have to change out both of those resistors, as well as that two inductors. Now, to change out those components, it's going to be a little difficult to do, um, so I'm actually going to remove the front panel, and that'll give me good front access to them. So let me go ahead and do that now. Well, it's turning out extremely hard to get the soldering iron down in there, especially the other side of that inductor at the far side there. So what I've decided to do is make a little heat shield that I can just put down there to protect that relay, the plastic package of those relays there, etc. And it should allow me to get the heat gun now down in there and hopefully remove those components. That's one of the inductors out. Let's try the other one. That's the other one out. How about the two resistors? Well, I should manage them with a the soldering iron, but since I'm here with a heat gun, let's just get that in about. There's one out, and the other one's right in the far corner. And there's the last resistor. Well, looking at this inductor, it's got the top cracked off of it. It looks a bit black and burnt inside. So I would say that's had some a rather large amount of current going through it. And it's just gone. And the other one, although it's still intact, is cracked across the top in much the same way. So let's try the resistors now. Out of circuit. 3.4k and 13.6k. Yeah, those need replaced. So let me go and assemble the new parts and let's get them on the board. And here's the replacement inductors. I managed to pick up a couple of 1 milli Henry inductors, which is the same spec as what was on the board. So they can go straight on. I think they're a very similar package as well. Should go straight on. Well, that's the components soldered back in place. And the question is, have the relay contacts been damaged? Have I got a melted relay? Well, I think the relay contacts are hopefully more robust than the inductors themselves, etc. So hopefully we're okay. But the only way to find that out, actually, is just to power the unit up and give it a test. So we're ready for a power up now. Let me go and put the meter back together. Let's get the front panel offered up and let's get some power in. And there we go. I've got power up. Now I don't actually have the shields in place so the inputs might be a bit noisy if it does indeed work. So let's try ohms first. And let's try putting a wire across the input there. Well, let's see if we can get zero ohms. And no, still got a problem. Okay, and I think I found another problem. There's a 5.0 ohm resistor here. Uh, might it be 0.1% and... Or 1% according to the component, but the parts list says 0.1. But uh, yeah, 1.1 meg. Now that's a, a, a precision resistor, 5.0 ohm, 1%. 
I'll need to get one of them, but I think for the time being, just a test, I'll stick a 5 ohm resistor in parallel with it and let's see if that uh, fixes the problem. Okay, let's try that again. Power on. Get into ohms mode and let's stick a cable up the input. Nope, we've still got a problem. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've hooked up my PDVS2 Mini, set it to 1 volt and put it across the uh, inputs there. I've got power on and I've verified that I'm getting a signal through the relays, which I was a bit worried they were melted, but uh, they seem to be switching okay anyway. And I am getting 1 volt all the way along to this uh, high X ref here. And that comes down onto this schematic here, it goes away through K101 relay, which is switching as well. And there's that to two inductors that I changed there. And then it goes away back up here through this inductor here. And this inductor is open circuit as well. So it's a different size, 10 micro Henry. I'm going to have to go and change that one out as well. Right, I don't have a 10 micro Henry inductor as yet i'll order one so i've put in a half ohm resistor same package so just temporarily so let's put power on dc voltage mode let me just switch on to pdvs too many just slightly off camera there set it to one volt and let's put in the input here and see what happens and yes 0.9991 volt exactly, five decimal places. Can't complain at that. Looks like I've got the inputs working. Let me just toggle the front rear switch. Yes, that appears to be okay. Right, let's try another mode. I'm presuming that the resistance mode will work okay as well. So let's just... Uh, in ohms and let's just short out the input initially and see what happens there and i've got an overload brilliant let's stick the input in and yes zero ohms effectively that's great now let me just try a known resistor value i've got my resistance box here let's just go for 10k yes Spot on 10k. The calibration of this unit is actually quite good. <laughs> About 100 ohm. Yes, 100k. Yes, spot on. Happy with that. Okay, so let me go ahead and order that 10 micro Henry inductor. And of course, this precision resistor over here, this 5.0 ohm 1% resistor or 0.1% according to the uh, uh, parts list but it says 1% on it I'll try and get the best I can we'll get them fitted and we'll take it for there well there is the 5 ohm resistor that I removed from the board and you can see my temporary resistor across it for testing but let's look at the other side actually it's been blown apart and uh, yeah the other part of it is nowhere to be seen so it must have made its way out of the case but uh, yeah 5 ohm resistor 1% 20 ppm temperature coefficient so I'll see if I can find one of these well step forward a couple of days the parts have arrived and I fitted that new inductor that I was waiting on and cleaned up the board there looking good and down here just about out of sight is the new precision resistor okay and so here we go ready for a power up again now I'll just connect up the PDVS2 Mini. Power up first. And just hook in. And yep, we've got spot on one volt there just about. So that's good. Voltage range is working good. Let me just up it to 10 volts and extend the number of digits 
And that's not looking too bad. Everything's cold at the moment. 9.99983 volts. And now I'll swap in my resistance box just to check that. So we'll go for uh, 100k. And yep, spot on. Pretty good. So I'm not going to box it back up just yet because I do actually want to test all the other ranges. I want to check that the current inputs are working, AC voltage, everything. Let's give this thing a good test and also let's uh, test the current right up to its maximum on the 34401A. Okay, and so off camera, I've got my HP 3245A hooked up on the inputs here, and I've currently got it set to output 1 volt DC, which as you can see, it's not too bad there. It seems to match the PDVS2 Mini, no problem at all. So now I'll just run through some of the other ranges and inputs very quickly. Let's just make sure it's working. So the AC voltage input, 10 volts peak to peak coming in, that's 3.53. Uh, volts RMS, so that's pretty accurate, no problem at all. And that 10 volts AC peak to peak, I've set it for 25 hertz, perfect. Okay, and I thought I'd switch over to my Keithley 225 current source, uh, just off camera there. I've got it set up for 50 milliamps output, so let me just uh, take it off a of standby. And there we go, and um, we've got just over. 50 milliamps DC, perfect. The 225 does need recalibrated. Um, that's for another day. I'm kind of letting it settle into the workshop before uh, I actually recalibrate it. And now just off camera, I've got a power supply hooked up to the inputs on the uh, current input and I want to test some of the higher current ranges so it's just a power supply it's not going to be accurate but I've got it set to about one amp constant current and as you can see there no problem at all so let's just take this right up to three amps which is the limit of that uh, current input there and yep just under three amps and I'm getting 2.96 no problem and a quick check of the diode input here Yep, it's managing to source OK for diode check, 0.5 of a volt. Turn it round, just to make sure. Yep, no problem. Well, there we go, it's all back together again. I've gone through some further tests that I did off camera, at like the GPIB, it's working fine, and a few more of the functions on the front, so quite happy that this unit's now repaired. I can return it back to my friend. Thanks for watching.